What's up guys? Welcome back to the poker vlog. This is gonna be for day three of our poker trip in LA. We're gonna play at Hollywood Park Casino for this vlog and spoiler alert, we basically decided to just play at HBC for the rest of the trip after first playing there since the action was good and we really liked the room. And this vlog is also gonna contain some random hands from other days because I wasn't really able to film much after day three. And yeah, this is gonna be the last vlog of this trip. But on the bright side, you guys will get to see the results of the entire two week trip at the end of this vlog. So stay tuned for that. So even though this vlog is gonna kind of be a mashup of multiple days, I still hope you enjoy and let's get to the hands. We get seated at a brand new table. I buy for 500 and within only about 10 minutes or so, I pick up ace jack of diamonds in the low jack. I open to 20 once it folds to me. The hijack calls and the player in the small blind three bets to $75. My hand is definitely too strong to fold, especially to a small blind squeeze, so I decide to call and the hijack folds. We're heads up to a flop of deuce 3-4 with two diamonds. So we have a gut shot, two overs, and the nut flush draw. And the small blind decides to check to me here. And at the time, I just kind of wanted to take it down, so I bet 65, but looking back, I think this is a perfectly fine spot to just check back. My opponent could definitely be playing kind of tricky with an overpair, thinking that I might bet since I see that a check is weak, and I'm really only getting like, what, ace-queen and ace-king to fold sometimes. And unfortunately for me, betting backfires because my opponent check raises to $215. The effective stack is about 420, nice. And I just don't really have any fold equity, I think, if I decide to 3-bet shove here. So I kind of think about the size of the pot, how much I'm going to have to call. I have to call 150 to win, what is that, like 455 or so? Uh, so I decided I was going to call, hopefully hit the world on the turn since I can make a straight, a flush, maybe hit an ace, which could be good. So I decide to make the call, knowing that I'm very likely behind, and the turn comes. So, uh, well. The seven of diamonds, we have the stone cold, well, the effective nuts. My opponent's never gonna have five, six suited here. And my opponent jams for 205. I snap call and just say I have the nuts right away. And let's see the run out. Or the, yeah, yeah, the effective nuts. Yeah, so I just showed mid run out and I win a big one here. Yeah, not sure about how I played it, but it's nice to win a big hand early and have some wiggle room in case things go wrong in the session. Pretty soon after this hand, the player to my right noticed that I was vlogging and he seemed pretty curious about it. We somehow started talking about video games and it turns out that not only do we both play Valorant, he also formerly was a competitive Valorant player, a coach, and he was also the team manager for Evil Geniuses the year that they won VCT, which was 2023. Because you're with the players every day, you have to understand how they're feeling and what's going on. Uh, for me, it's just time constraints. Everyone likes to take just a little bit longer to do their own thing. Uh, maybe it's just lagging behind on something, but we operate on pretty tight schedules. So pretty impressive stuff. He definitely knows that game very well. His name was Kurt, which is what my name often autocorrects to when you try to type it into a phone. He said he had been playing poker for about four or five months, if I remember correctly, so we'll get to see some of the hands he plays later in the vlog. Later in the session, I get dealt Queen Jack of Diamonds in the hijack. I open it to 20 and get called by the button and the big blind. So three ways to a flop, and it comes down 8-10 deuce with two clubs. We have two overs, a gut shot, and a backdoor flush draw. Not a terrible flop for my exact holding, but it is a pretty bad flop for my range in general. So once the big blind checks, I decide to check here, and the player on the button bets $45 here. So fairly large bet. The big blind gets out of the way, and I'm not going to fold just yet here, although he is basically saying he has at least top pair with this bet. Not only can I hit a 9, a jack, or a queen to potentially take the lead, or a diamond, which would give me some equity. I could also barrel on a king or an ace, or maybe he'll potentially slow down and I'll have a chance to bluff. The turn brings the ace of clubs, completing the front door flush draw and also giving me a double gutter here. So now a king will also give me the straight. I check to my opponent again, 
and this time he bets $75, so about half pot. And given that I pick up equity here, I decide to flat call once again and see what happens on the river. It is kind of annoying playing out of position, but definitely not impossible for me to take the lead or potentially just bluff if I feel like I'm certain he has just a 10 and the river might be scary for him. And unfortunately for us, the river card comes the Ace of Hearts, which makes it less likely now that I have an Ace. If it came another card, I could potentially just try to rep an Ace or even better and just like shove or I don't know, just bet. And I did think about it for a little bit, but ultimately I just thought this wasn't one of those spots where I should try to make a move here. And I decide to just give up and check to him. He checks back and I tell him the pair is good and he shows us 9-8 offsuit. So he did not have top pair at any point in the hand and luckily for him I did not hit anything either and I was too scared to fire. So he's going to win this one. This next hand is going to be one I played against Kurt. I have pocket 9s in the big blind. The player in the cutoff opens to 20, Kurt is in the small blind and he calls, and I decide to 3-bet here to $80. I think I could definitely flat here with 9s, but generally I just like 3-betting in the big blind more often. Plus the other player seems pretty standard and we don't know how Kurt plays, so we do want to potentially just take down this pot outright. The cutoff folds, Kurt decides to call, we're going blind versus blind, and we're in position to a flop of 5-8 king with one club. Kurt checks to me, and I decide to bet 65 here, which I would do with most of my range, if not all of it. Kurt makes the call. The turn is the queen of clubs, bringing a second club on the board, and also just bringing another card above a 9, which I don't really like to see. He checks to me once again, and this time I just decide to check back, because I think on a board like 5-8 king, he's not really going to call me with that many draws, since it's not really a draw-heavy board, and he's more likely going to have like king x, you know, maybe like ace-jack, queen-jack, something like that, that is going to float one time. So I think I'm not really getting anything worse to call, and I'm just going to try to get to showdown potentially. The river comes the ace of spades, which interestingly could help me more often than it helps him. I could decide to fire if he checks to me, since I'm going to have, you know, ace-jack played this way, maybe ace-queen, but he does not check. He bets 110 here, which is about a third pot, and I start contemplating a jam since the effective stack size is 350 and I think that would be a more or less appropriate size to try to rep something strong here. But after thinking about it for a while, I just didn't really feel like I can ever rep like aces, ace king um, after checking the turn. And I could reasonably have like something like king queen or pocket queens that check turn to trap. Um, honestly, maybe even kings. But I thought about what hands he could be betting for value here, and if he has like, I don't know, ace-jack, maybe ace-queen, which he could definitely have played this way, then I'm just never really getting those to fold, I don't think, if I jam here. Uh, is he ever really turning like king X into a bluff or something? I don't think so. It seems like a pretty uh, value-oriented bet size, in my opinion. And I don't think he has some random hand that he just called with on the flop and is randomly firing with. So I finally say to him, I don't think you fold to a jam, and I fold, and he shows queen seven of spades and says, I do fold to a jam, so definitely missed an opportunity to steal this pot. I don't hate the way I played it, but definitely wish I had obviously jammed here and just taken it. It would be nice to show the bluff too, but he's going to take this one. Well played, Kurt. Now let's get to a hand that Kurt played against a different player. He's got queen jack of spades on the button. There's an under the gun open to $20, and once action's on Kurt, he 3-bets very small here to $45. Action folds to under the gun, and he makes the call. So going to a flop of 8-5-queen, two clubs, heads up here. The under the gun player checks. Kurt bets $60 here, just about half pot, and the under the gun player calls. The turn is the deuce of spades. It's a complete blank. The under the gun player checks again, and now Kurt decides to bet $100 into a pot of 220. I like this sizing because it gets value from worse queens still, and club draws, while also being enough, I think, to get any overcards to fold, like ace x or king x, so I think I would have probably played it a similar way. Now the under the gun player check raise jams to 350-ish. Kurt's got to make a decision now. He has to call 250 into a pot of around 700, so getting a decent price, and I think I would definitely call here given how I've seen a lot of the people at Hollywood Park Casino play, but Kurt doesn't call right away. He decides to tank for a while before making the call and saying he thinks it's the wrong call. 
The other player said that he thought Kurt was weak, so now we know that Kurt's definitely ahead with his top pair. And once the river comes out, the four of diamonds, Kurt shows, and the other player mucks, I think, because otherwise I would have written what he had. Kurt wins a nice one, makes a nice little call here in a spot where he didn't feel too confident and rakes in a big pot. Here you had Queen King. No, you did. What? No, I actually did. I actually did. All right, back to the main character of the vlog. I've got King Jack suited in the hijack, so close to being my favorite hand of all time. The player in Under the Gun plus one limps. I make it $25 when action's on me, and I get called by both of the blinds, and the limper gets out of the way. So we're three ways to a flop of eight king queen rainbow. Pretty nice flop for my hand. We've got the second highest top pair here. The blinds check it to me, and I bet 30, and both of them call. So we're going to return cards, still three ways, and it comes a five of clubs, bringing a second club, but otherwise being a pretty blank card. Interestingly though, the small blind now decides to lead out for $75. The big blind gets out of the way, and given that I pick up a flush draw, and I still have the second best top pair possible, I'm definitely not going anywhere, and there's no need to raise here and put myself in a weird spot. So I make the call. At the time, I was also thinking to myself that this player was pretty recreational and was also playing short stacked, so he could definitely have some kind of like random two pair here, like queen eight, king eight, king five, something like that. With that in mind, the river comes down the king of diamonds, making my decision tree very simple. If he goes all in here, which is really his only move if he wants to bet, then I'm just calling it off, obviously, and if he checks, we are definitely betting for value. He decides to check here, and given his line is so weak, like leading out on the turn and then checking river. He probably either has complete air or like, I don't know, maybe queen X or like some weird like nines or tens that just want to bet for whatever reason. I really don't know, but we're not really getting much value from anything else. So I know I'm going to have to bet small if I want any chance of getting value from those random like middling hands. So I put out a bet of $90 here, very small, and my opponent does call but doesn't look thrilled. He says he just has a queen, so he did indeed have some kind of like middling hand that just wanted to bluff catch. I show my hand and win, but now thinking about it, maybe if I just jam here, does he try to bluff catch anyways because it's only 200. Perhaps I missed out on some value here, but I don't hate the way I played it. Shortly after this hand, we take a break at around 11.30 p.m. to get some food, and I cashed out at this time for 8.57, so a nice little profit of 3.57 so far. We had played for about five and a half hours at this time, and George, on the other hand, also bought in for 500, but cashed out before the break for $1,188, so a nice little $688 profit, very solid result. We were joined for dinner by both Kurt and his friend Wally, who was primarily a tournament player, but happened to be playing cash that night. So, if you don't mind telling the vlog, um, you got second at a, one of the WSOPC events. It was one of the events on uh, Saturday during the house warming. Um, oh, sweet. One of the side events. Um, yeah, I did pretty well there, cash. Okay. Uh, and then I, I cashed in the house warming event, made it to day two. Did not, oh, yes. Did not do well after that. Um, main event uh, got destroyed. And then I played in the $400 ring events. Um, Ran pretty deep, but again, no cash, just didn't work out there. Otherwise, I've been on like a decent run of uh, all these like local dailies gotcha. and stuff. Um, I've cashed, or I've gotten like top three and at least five of them in the last month. That's, top three and at least five is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> That's sick. Yeah, yeah it's Good fun. For you, man. So you focus mainly on attorneys now? Yeah. Yeah, like I said. went through a cash phase. I realized I'm just so bad at cash. <laughs> it's not my thing. I'm not good at it, but I am good at attorneys. So. Sweet. And here we are, playing cash. Playing cash. This is not a full rack for a reason, let me tell you. <laughs> It's time to get back to the tables, and this next hand is going to be the last one for this session, but not for the vlog as a whole. We've got Ace-King offsuit in Under the Gun plus one here. I make it $25, and I only get called by the player in the small blind, who is definitely a recreational player. We're going to a flop heads up, which comes deuce-seven deuce with two diamonds. I do have the ace of diamonds. The small blind checks to me, and I put out a very small bet of 15 here, which I would do with pretty much all my range. He snap calls, and very casually tosses the chips in, which, long story short, to me just means he's weak, and that's something I'm going to be thinking about later on in this hand. The turn comes down the 10 of clubs, the small blind checks again, and I decide to size up here, making it $55, putting the pressure on, and action's back on him, and he decides to check raise me here to 125, so a fairly small-ish check raise, 
And honestly, guys, I just put him on literally nothing here. I don't think this raise really makes sense. Like, what is he actually repping here? 10-7 suited, maybe, which I can imagine this player playing. And besides that, just like sets. But just given the kind of like timing slash mannerism tell on the flop, plus the fact that this check raise is so small and just the fact that I don't feel like he really has anything just intuitively, I just didn't believe him. The issue though is that I need to be prepared to call a river shove since if I call here, our effective stack on the river will be about the size of the pot. And am I really ready to call with ace high on the river if he jams? Not really sure, but after some thinking, I just mentally decided to trust myself and I decided that I will probably call River if he decides to jam, unless some like catastrophic card comes out. I don't know, maybe like the Jack of Diamonds. I think 9-10 suited is a pretty solid bluff for him to have here, like 9-10 of Diamonds or something like that. So that was my plan going forward. I make the call and the River comes down, the King of Diamonds. Completing the front door flush, although it is very helpful for us to have the Ace of Diamonds here, pretty relevant card in my opinion, and it also gives us top pair, top kicker, so we have a very simple decision if he decides to shove, and he does indeed go all in for 320. I snap call, and my opponent says he just has a king, and he shows king jack of spades. He now starts saying to me, you call the raise on the turn, and the whole table starts commenting on it as well, and they all seem flabbergasted, which was a pretty fun moment in this session. I'm very happy to have trusted my gut here and just believed that he had nothing and had a plan going forward, and I was very lucky that the river came down a king, which not only obviously gave me top pair top kicker, but also was a good card for him to continue on with king jack of spades and getting me max value. Very happy with how this hand ran out and also with how I played it. It was nice to win one big pot before finally leaving. Eventually I moved to George's table where he said there was a lot of action but not much ends up happening and finally we decide to cash out after about two and a half hours of playing or so for the second part of the session. I was in for 600 total and ended up cashing out for 859 for a $259 profit. That makes for a $660 profit on the day in about eight hours of play. All right, we finally we finally got something going. Obviously, I won yesterday's session, but today George finally turned it around. He got in some good spots and ended up making uh, what was it, 900? <laughs> 950. Okay, 950. cool. Over um, almost exactly eight hours. George made a really good full today where he had jacks. Do you want to go over the hand real quick? Straddle on, 5-5-10. Five, five, I make it 50 under the gun. Pretty standard size for the table. There's no one was folding anything. One call behind me. The guy who was playing pretty much every single hand, 3 bet to 150. I was already pretty concerned at this point because he wasn't 3 betting. He was just calling everything. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm not going to be folding that. So, folds around back to me. I call the 150, and then the guy who just moved to our table back jams 500 pretty much instantly. The other guy calls, and I let go of my pocket jacks. Yep. And then with the and man who back raised, what did he have? He had ace ace. Yes. <laughs> the pocket aces, and the other guy had queens. Mm -hmm. And obviously, the guy. Calling everything of Queens wins the pot. Of with course, the flush. like it always happens. Yeah. And that guy was just hitting everything, playing every hand, calling with middle pair versus big bets and stuff. Unfortunately, I don't think you got a single good spot against him, maybe one or two, I think. I got one at the very start, which doubled me up. Gotcha. But gotcha. every single spot after that. Sweet. I gave some back to him. Back to him. <laughs> the important but, thing is, yeah. we won today, finally uh, turning things around, and hopefully the rest of the trip can go well too. But so far, we both really like HPC. The rest of the vlog is going to be random hands and parts from the trip, starting with a funny story from George. It's currently about 7 a.m. We actually just got back from finishing a session at HPC. George was involved in a very interesting hand and a very interesting just life situation. Hey guys, so <laughs> you literally will see me in a tank top. Does but, this seem too yeah. revealing in your opinion, George? Does this seem like an inappropriate outfit in your opinion? I didn't think so, and I didn't <laughs> think California had a dress code until uh. today. So, an hour into the session, I get a tap on the shoulder, and security come up to me. 
and they quickly tell me that I'm not allowed to be wearing any tank tops or anything without sleeves and do you have a jacket or something? We're looking for other options for you, but we, we really don't want to kick you out because that's what they would literally they kick me out of the entire place. They come back to me and they're like, we would need you to either take this random, they gave me a random jumper from the Lost and Found. Yeah. They wouldn't even tell me, they said, it's clean, it's clean. I, <laughs> I asked whose was it, where did it come from, it's clean, that's all they tell me. So they say, maybe if they can, the gift shop was closed, I could get one from the gift shop and buy one. And they said, if, if they could do that, they'll do it for me. So they go off again and I get into this hand. In the hand, I have Pocket Kings. We're 1600 deep, we'll go from here. Uh, the gist of the hand is I call 4 bet to 175, so I get 5 bet to 460, thinking immediately, oh fuck, this is aces. <laughs> <laughs> and so I call Jack High Flop with about 1000 in there, and he bets 350 into a, about 1000, we're playing 1600 deep, and as I'm, as I'm tanking like, oh my god, do I, can I fold kings here? They come up to me, tap me on the shoulder, and they keep asking me three times during the hand, mm -hmm. like, as I'm trying to think. But they just kept asking me, like, do you want to buy this shirt? We've got this shirt here now, and show me the biggest, where it, here's the t-shirt. Yeah, so sure. just like, and you're a big guy, how tall are you? 6'2". 6'2". Six two. Six six two. Two. And, and this shirt is enormous. This, this t-shirt is the biggest thing you'll ever see in your entire life. Like, I... The second biggest. Sorry, sorry. The no. second biggest. <laughs> But yeah, just this just makes me look like a teenage girl who's like in pajamas or whatever. It's like the biggest t-shirt I've ever seen in my life. But so they offered me this t-shirt, and I was trying to think. Someone else at the table eventually told them, like this guy is literally thinking for like a two thousand dollar part. So yeah. <laughs> could you like leave me alone for a minute? Someone calls clock on me in this time, and I must be like talking terms. I don't I don't know. And all of a sudden they say they give me a countdown for five, and I kind of panic, and I'm like. Well, I'm either jamming or folding, and eventually just like jam 1100 on the flop, and yeah, he just has aces and torch 1100 dollars against aces with yeah. kings because they were all, yeah all of these things yeah. are happening at once and lost a 3400 dollar yeah. pot. Yeah. And then that what happened right after you lost the hand? What was the table saying? Oh what? Oh that, about the sh oh like the guy who beat me buying the t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like this twenty dollar t-shirt and like yeah. So now yeah. I have I got this t-shirt that I got for free. <laughs> Well, I, got, I, bought, I bought it for pretty much eleven hundred dollars, but it's a pretty <laughs> expensive T-shirt. Yeah, it it's really it's almost like the worst needle. Like he gets clock calls on him without knowing while being talked to by staff, losing kings versus aces, yeah. and then the Look, person buying him the shirt, obviously buying him the shirt, not as a way to needle him, but just yeah. it's just a funny situation. Just, not so funny yeah, when you're. Just, just look at the side, like, d it, like. Just imagine this on like I don't I just don't understand. It's just huge. <laughs> like just look at me. <laughs> it's, what do I what do I, what do I even say? I mean I, even say? I mean it is your yeah. fault for showing way too much skin, George. Oh, okay, you're all you're all being all a little bit uh, yeah arms. yeah. I might get this video demonetized for him showing his arms. But anyways, <laughs> wish us luck for this following session, whatever it may be. We need to sleep because we. Need, it is 7 a.m. and we have not slept. This might end up on OnlyFans. I don't know, it's a little too crazy yeah, for that, might, might. even for that. Yeah. Okay guys, George hasn't gotten much good screen time in this vlog. We gotta get a hand where he doesn't lose 300 big blinds with pocket kings. In this hand, he's in a three-way all-in with ace-king preflop, and one player claims to have gone all-in blind, whereas another player shows one ace. You got two of them? He does this yeah. super stupid shit. Maybe he's probably like ace king suited. That's what I have ace king. Yeah, that's a good flop for ace king. Oh, that's not the worst. Good job. Yeah, but he's king of diamonds. Oh, diamond. Showdown guys. guys. Show. Or maybe he wins. I have ace king. Do I show first? Show the hands, sir. Oh my god. Oh, uh, no, no way. You, you no way. You got a chance. Show. You haven't looked. I know he hasn't looked. Ace king. He's got king. Oh, you're good. Amigo. Uh, so it's totally bullshit. Nine or eight. Nine or eight. Nine or you, huh? Nine or eight, you win. You want a fucking Jackson? Oh, 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 oh my gosh. god. Did you know? He, he, no, he, he, no, he, 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 he actually blind. did it blind. <laughs> that one, he actually went in blind. Very nice to see George win a three-way all-in, especially considering he was running very badly during the trip, which you guys couldn't really see much of. Finally, let's end the vlog with some funny interactions from one of my last sessions in the trip. This was against a player who just couldn't seem to win a hand against me, and I was simply just running extremely well this session, making hand after hand after hand, and it was one of the best sessions in the trip. 
Why are you recording? Uh, what I'm doing. No. 65. Well, I did have, I will show I had Ace King. I can't even call. And you called my hand. You called my hand. You said Ace King. This guy is fucking uh, six and zero against me. This guy's six and zero against me, bro. I cannot beat him. Just running well. Yeah, just running bro. well. You made a good fold on the ace queen though. When I had ace queen, so. Hell no! I shouldn't even call the one seventy five. This player later told me his name was Brian and that he was a dealer at Lucky Lady Casino and you can actually see him dealing on DGAF's live poker show on YouTube. Super cool dude and he told me that I could call him Bad Beat Brian. Way no. sixty. Oh, sixty. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 60 again. Yeah, yeah. I'm active. Uh, Man, I gotta get on one hand. <laughs> <clears throat> you wanna just flip? Blind? I think that's the only way I could beat I'm not a, Okay, how much? Too much money. How much is it? 300 something. Figure out another button. Figure out another button. 370. See, you got all the show. Now you got 60 in there, so 290 more if you want to come. Uh, all in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have East King again. Uh, I have East King again. I want it. <laughs> yeah, no more Ace Kings no, after this. No hey, Jose was right. This is my hand. No more. Oh, uh, no. Please, no more. one Get time. No more. Oh, nice hand. All the kings are out. We all had a king. Hmm? 370. Oh, <laughs> Man, how does it feel to lose one? <laughs> that, oh no, no, you're not in it, you're not in it. Alright guys, before we get into the final results of the trip, I just want to quickly shout out Nathan the Dealer, who was a dealer at HPC and had seen the vlogs before, as well as another viewer who came up to say hi and said he wanted to be in the vlog. I ended up getting seated right next to him, but unfortunately the seat got given to someone else shortly after because I think someone was table changing, so I didn't actually get to get him in the vlog, but if I ever see you at HBC again, feel free to say hi and I will try to get you in the vlog. For this trip, we played just under 100 hours and I ended up netting $375, which is a win, but unfortunately I definitely ran under EV with an hourly rate of less than $4. George on the other hand made about $1,100, so good for him, but unfortunately for both of us, expenses cost more than we made. But I did learn a lot from playing with George, he's a lot stronger of a player than I am despite having played for less time, and he was essentially a coach throughout the entire trip, so big shout out to George for all the help. In the next video, I am going to go over some hands that I felt were interesting. It's going to be less of a vlog and more of just me going over hand histories. And one of the hands in there will be the biggest hand that I played throughout the trip. And it massively defined the results. So stick around for that. Anyways, I really hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I know it's super long overdue and it was kind of a messy one. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.